Well, for you, thank goodness that's over. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is The Steak Bake and today we're going to go through my opinions on England's match against Serbia. Certainly wasn't a pretty display from the England lads, certainly in the second half. However, England did beat Serbia 1-0, which means we're a three points and top of the group. And it means that we are in a good position to already qualify through the group stages. That being said, there was a lot of negatives to that performance. There were definitely some positive as well, and I'll probably go through the positives first, but it was certainly one of those performances that left you dabbing your brow and wiping the sweat away for the last 20 minutes of that game and through most of the second half. First up, let's go through the positives, and there were a few. England did, of course, win the game with a clean sheet and a very good one as well. First up, I would like to point out Mark Gway, who had a very, very good game at centre-back, considering he's only played with John Stones three times before this game. I thought he looked very good in an England shirt today. He looked good on the ball. He defended well. He looked physical. He got ahead of his man. He looked like he was reading the game very well. And it is a player that I highlighted before on Twitter. I was just saying that Gway is going to have a very difficult game today coming up against the likes of Lahovic and Mitrovic. And to be honest, he reduced them to very few chances before Mitrovic was eventually subbed off during the game. One of the things that the BBC team were talking about was his kind of modesty. He doesn't want to be the star of the team, is what Rio Ferdinand said. And I think that really sums him up in today's performance. He wasn't there to do anything clever. He wasn't there to do anything super technical. He was just there to stab the ball away from any passes coming towards the penalty area, win as many headers as he can, hold off as many players as he can, and play some forward passes to England moving out from the back. And in the first half, he did some really nice passes through the midfield, but that was about as creative as he got some arrow forward passes. Most of his passes were lateral across to John Stones or across to Kyle Walker on the far side. A little bit of link up with Trippier down that side and Foden as well. Uh, and then Declan Rice helped him out a lot, showing a lot for the ball. Uh, Declan Rice, ever good performance from him. We expect nothing less from a man like him at the moment. But Gway really impressed me today and he gives me hope for the rest of the tournament that he's going to be the right man at that left centre back position. I don't think we can talk about the positives without talking too much about Jude Bellingham. The man oozed class today. He looks like the best player on the pitch, man of the match, and with the goal as well. And one of the things that impressed me the most was his desire to get to that ball. The ball deflected up from a Bakayo Saka cross. It went over Kane's head, and Jude was quite a distance away from it. He was behind the penalty spot, that's for sure. And he charged and he knew that if he timed his run right, he would get there just ahead of the defender, took a big clart across the face as well for his troubles. But he got there first, headed that ball into the back of the net. And I feel like that's the kind of player that Jude Bellingham knows he is. He knows he's good. He knows what he can do with the ball. He knows what he can do on the pitch to make an influence. And he just oozes that confidence for me. He was asked by the interview, what's it like to be Jude Bellingham right now? And he jokingly said, it's pretty good. But Jude Bellingham is more than just one person. It's a whole group of t people that build him into it. And I think Jude Bellingham realises that, that he is a hierarchy of a player. Right at the top is Jude Bellingham, but underneath him is the foundations of the squad and the people that make him who he is. And he takes that on board. And I love that from Jude. It shows a real sense of maturity, a real clever level head from the man. Something that I perhaps would say makes him very captain material in the future. Obviously, he's a little bit young right now, I would suggest. Perhaps when Kane retires, the captaincy and the vice captaincy will fall to Rice and Bellingham, I think, in my opinion anyway. But Bellingham just did great things like put himself about. He was getting in slide tackles. He was being very physical with a very physical Serbia team. You needed to be physical in that midfield. And I felt like we lacked it at certain points during the game, especially with Trent. I didn't think he quite put himself out enough as I would have liked and Jude Bellingham had to kind of pick up that slack a little bit we'll get on to Trent in just a little bit um but yeah Jude Bellingham was absolutely fantastic really led the team today and there's a reason why he was man of the match and it wasn't just because of that goal that he got I just think Jude Bellingham had a really really good game and I think he will continue to do so for the rest of the tournament you can tell that England is going to rely on him pretty heavily and I don't think that's necessarily a problem when you've got a player of that talent playing on such big stages for Real Madrid and the Champions League final and things like that. He's already done these really big games. These tournament football games are not actually much of a step up for him. 
he's already right at the top elite and you can see the quality that he uses i've said ooze quite a lot in this jude bellingham section but he uses quality what can i say another really important part of england's game and one of the main reasons why i think they took home all three points today was the last 20 to 30 minutes of the game from harry kane in the first half i don't think he did much at all i think he had two touches and one of them was a flick on header that barely went to anyone didn't really create any chances didn't really do anything didn't get into the right positions and in fact i actually thought he didn't put himself about enough there was a few balls into the penalty area that i was like oh harry just take another step forward and lunge for it and he just didn't however in the second half he became a really important part of england getting all three points and getting the clean sheet he broke the game down and as a striker that's a really difficult skill to do but harry kane knows exactly how to put his body in between the defender and the ball and win those free kicks you see it from jack Grealish quite a lot he'll just tap the ball away from the defender take the free kick that kind of thing harry kane does it really well as well and he does it aerially as well which jack Grealish doesn't quite do as much as more on the floor harry kane's quite happy to take the ball in his chest get pushed in the back and he angles his body in ways that he knows he's going to get fouled he backs himself into it he puts himself off balance and then any hands on the back he's going to get knocked over and win england a free kick and push them further up the field and allow them to get out of that defensive line it's not a way i would like england to rely on harry kane but when we did today he did it brilliantly as i say it's not how i want to rely on harry kane i want to rely on harry kane for goals and he very nearly did get one really big opportunity right in front of goal he heads the ball and i thought he perhaps gave the goalkeeper just a little bit too much of an opportunity to win it rose really well got the header really in the center of his head bullet header but it was it was kind of here and although the goalkeeper's moving away from that position he's always going to get that chance to throw his hand up and save that header from harry kane although i must admit absolutely world-class save and i thought the serbian goalkeeper played really really well today england had a couple of chances throughout the game which i thought perhaps should have been a goal kyle walker steaming through uh, played the ball across the face of goal when he perhaps should have just shot i think he had a really good opportunity just to kind of belt the ball into the net a little bit like the albania goal yesterday but he chose to pass the ball across and no player really committed to it which was a little bit of a sign for england that they weren't going to fully commit to the attack in this game certainly not in the second half i'd have liked to seen us just try a little bit more to get that second goal and then I'd have been a little bit more content seeing us sit back for the whole of the second half and a bit of the first half as well. Sitting back for England when we are such a good team is so dangerous because it is our defensive line that is the weakest point in the team. So you're inviting pressure onto our weakest point. I think it's not the best way for England to play. So let's get on to the negatives of our performance now. And although we did get the win goodness for me it was a tense game i'm sitting there with my heart pounding sweat rolling down the back of my neck my mum is to my right and she is a very nervous football watcher we could be three nil up and she's there going oh don't pass it backwards don't pass it backwards so she gets very nervous when watching football my dad's there on the edge of his seat as well it was just one of those performances where i felt like a little bit of luck for serbia going through and they would have put the ball in the back of the net they just didn't quite get that luck admittedly i don't think they did enough serbia personally they didn't really challenge the goal there was the one save that pickford palmed over the top and the one chance from mitrovic which kind of hit the side netting or the stanchion that holds up the goal those were serbia's best opportunities a couple of headers in and around the box and clumsy clearances which you say were maybe half chances quarter chances for them but they didn't really create enough and i don't really think that england were in loads of danger which is why i'm a little bit confused as to why they sat so deep for the whole of the second half maybe they just didn't think that serbia would be able to create the chance and it, it did prove right from gareth southgate to be fair one of the main reasons i think that it didn't work for a couple of players on the field is that right-footed player at left back it really limits you in the way that you can play the ball down that left hand side and Trippier was getting the ball quite a lot to his feet and then being unable to run down the line because Foden had run left and couldn't he couldn't play the ball with his left foot as easily it was a more dangerous pass with a foot that isn't your strong one it's a little bit more unnatural and I just felt that Trippier was driving it too much into Rice and Foden inside the touchline and that was kind of dragging England's performance down a little bit not saying that Trippier necessarily played badly I thought he filled in pretty well at left back 
It's just a natural fault of the way England have set up. And unfortunately, without Luke Shaw, we're going to continue to do that. Basically, we need a left footer on the left side, and I think that will unlock Phil Foden. And Phil Foden was one of the big negatives of this game. I don't necessarily think he played terribly. I just think he didn't do the things that we know Phil Foden can do. He didn't do the job that we see him do for Manchester City and take the game by the scruff of the neck, create chances, create passes, create movement going forward, pull the whole team further up the pitch. And I know he was instructed not to do that, but part of that is the fact that he's not receiving the balls down the line from a left footer. He's receiving them from a right footer, so he has to show in a different way. And it's the same showing from Declan Rice as well. It's all just small things that make you play in a different way. And Phil Foden did kind of sacrifice his normal game today to play a sort of distraction for the Serbian defence, which was a bit of a shame for Phil because I felt like this could have been one of those games where he pops up with a goal or pops up with an assist, but he just wasn't allowed to get into the game in that way. And I think that's a real negative of England's performances that we didn't allow one of our best players to play at their best. A lot of you might say that if we played Phil Foden more in the 10 role, then perhaps he would have had a bigger flourishing game. But then you'd have done the same thing to Jude Bellingham. And I think physically, Jude Bellingham brings a little bit more to that midfield. Although, as they were discussing in the BBC studio, Jude Bellingham made the ball come to him today. He made it happen. He did things. He chased it. He chased chances. He showed. He bullied players off the ball. Phil Foden's game isn't really that. And he couldn't really do that against Serbia, unfortunately. Another negative, and I didn't think this would really be a negative when I saw the lineup, Trent Alexander-Arnold starting at holding midfield. Again, I don't think he had a dreadful game. I just think he didn't do the things that we needed him to do in that second half, and that's why he was uh, relinquished for Conor Gallagher, someone who's going to put himself about more, uh, put a cat amongst the pigeons, so to say. And he did do that, certainly in the last 10 minutes of the game. Gallagher was jumping for headers and winning free kicks and playing those short, simple balls that kind of break Serbia down and give the ball to Kane to let him win free kicks and things. Breaking the game down is what Gallagher came on to do, and that is pretty much what he did. Trent didn't really do that. He was clearly there to ping a ball over the top, pass the ball out wide, use his expert passing, and in the second half, he didn't really have the opportunity to do that. We saw flashes of it in the first, and I think that is something that we can use throughout the tournament, but it didn't work in this game and I think perhaps playing a more physical central midfielder like Gallagher or Mainu would have been better. For me, that defensive and holding style that we played in the second half is much more painful to watch when the ball goes out wide because you can kind of see that Trippier and Walker and then to a lesser extent Saka and um, Foden were told not to just go down the wing. They were told not to run for those balls over the top and I think that breaks down Trent Alexander-Arnold's game it breaks down the winger's game. I didn't think Bakayo Saka had a particularly strong game. The assist was helped by a deflection. Like, he didn't really do too much. And I think that's because of England's holding style. They weren't able to just commit themselves forward. We needed them to just kind of be like, you know what, I'm going to take this guy on. They didn't. And that's an instruction direct from the top. That's the England's style of play, is that we're being told not to take as many risks, certainly when we're one goal to the good. I think we need to be two goals up, personally. A bigger team today would have scored. Um, a bigger team would have pushed us further. But Serbia had quite a lot of control of possession in the second half for a team that we absolutely dominated on possession in the first. I just don't think that style of play really suits England. It was a grinded result, and England can certainly take positives from it. But I really hope the rest of the tournament isn't like that. I really, really do. So, in conclusion, it's three points for England in a scrappy, hard-fought game against a side that we probably didn't need to fight quite as hard to get the result. However, three points on the board, clean sheet, positive goal difference, top of the group, positives for sure. Bellingham, certainly a big positive, and Gwei as well today, and, and to a lesser extent, Harry Kane, for the way he played in that role that I'd rather he didn't play. But yes, England won. We take it, but please, please, please score more goals throughout the tournament. Take the pressure off of us a little bit. Go for the jugular against the bigger teams. Against, the, In fact, go for the jugular against the lesser teams. I think that's a little bit more important. If we go to the Denmark game uh, and we beat them 3-0, fantastic. We're set up for the final game. We can rest players. We can rotate players and things like that. And that sets us up for the quarterfinals. So 
that's my go-to really i think just we just need to be a bit more positive but we did win so i'm trying not to be too negative i'm really trying to say well done england we got the three points just for my own heart's sake please stop playing like that please <laughs> If you have enjoyed today's video, I'm going to do a little reaction to each of England's games throughout the tournament and then a little tournament summary at the end. If anything really mad and interesting happens, I'll probably comment on that as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please go leave a like and a subscription down below. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, be kind to one another. Bye bye.